Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-release of the Kenworth W900 Aerodyne Conventional Tractor by Ravel through the monogram name. And the kit is a larger 1 16th scale with lots of detail. It's number 2508 in the catalog, and there have been previous releases of this kit in many box arts, but largely the parts are the same. It's a skill level 3 for the advanced builder age 12 and up, and there are 278 parts molded in blue, black, chrome, and clear, including vinyl tires and water slide decals. The instruction sheet is typical Ravel book style, it's easy to follow, and the build starts with a chassis, nicely detailed, and most of it can be assembled prior to painting. The motor is fairly detailed, and has, but has a low parts count, and the chrome is bright and crisp. The interior is highly detailed, but lacks decals for the dash. The cab is a single part with multiple part sleeper. Painting the cab as a unit is difficult because of the glass in the sleeper roof. The assembly is pretty straightforward, but it can be tedious with a lot of chrome being glued to the painted surfaces. So work carefully to build a quality finished kit. Overall dimensions are about 20 inches long, 6 inches wide, and 8 and a quarter inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, the colors are nice and the registry is good, but you're kind of relegated to certain body colors because of the decals of these are the only ones available. Nonetheless, I suggest you use some of the um, setting solutions available in the aftermarket to make sure that these conform to the contours and stick well to the body. In addition, you'll find that we use Model Master's uh, liquid cement for most of the construction. Occasionally, however, super glue is used for strength and white glue for clear parts. And as always, follow the manufacturer's suggestions when using any of the products seen here for your own personal safety. Here are what the contents look like. And as this uh, model is molded in blue, I determined uh, the best course of action was to wash the uh, body parts off with some mild uh, so soap detergent and, uh, and rinse them off and let them dry. Then spray the entire uh, batch with some high quality primer. Construction will start with the chassis, so you're going to want to grab these parts out of the kit and arrange them so that you can clean them up and get them ready for construction. Attach the front frame horns and then add the front motor mount. Add the radiator support and assemble the three center cross members to one side. Then assemble the rear axle stabilizer and install the cross members from uh, the front middle, rear middle, and then the stabilizer and finally the rear cross member uh, together. Assemble the front leaf springs and install those. Add the front axle and the tie rod to the leaf springs. Assemble the fuel filter and install it onto the frame. Then paint the shocks black but don't install those yet. We can grab these parts and to assemble and install the power steering reservoir. Attach the steering box to the frame and add the linkage in place and paint this completed frame unit as a whole. I used a metallic mix for mine uh, for the frame, and, but the instructions call for a semi-gloss black. Now with the frame and the shock absorbers uh, suitably dried for construction, scrape any paint off of the contact areas where the glue goes to make sure that you get a good bond. This goes for chrome parts too, especially on this kit. Get these parts out and paint the front brake drum steel and the brakes are, uh, units are assembled and then painted black. Now add a brake unit to the drum and install the drums to the axle. Gather up the parts for the rear airbags and paint those all uh, flat black uh, for frame construction. Now paint your suspension mounts frame color and then install those onto the airbags. Fifth wheel construction is next so grab these parts out of the kit and paint the fifth wheel uh, plate a frame color with the fifth wheel itself section being uh, black. Now the deck is aluminum or chrome and the cab frame brace is frame color as well. Install the cab frame brace and add the deck plate and the fifth wheel plate. Then add the fifth wheel into place. Get out the pieces for the rear axles and paint those frame color. Now the brake units are assembled and painted black and the brake drums are steel. The drive shaft is steel and if you're building for a contest there'll be plenty of seams here 
and at the joins uh, to be sanded and finished if you want a nice smooth finish for your model. Attach the brake drums into place on the axles with the brake units attached. The front axle has uh, the brakes to the front and the rear axle to the rear. Now install the front axle to the suspension supports and add the drive shaft and the rear axle. Grab the shocks and the torsion bar frame out of the kit and paint the torsion bar frame uh, a frame color and then the shocks are flat black like the others. The red arrows here uh, indicate where the shocks are inserted into the torsion bars and installed. And so install the bar onto the suspension and those are the white arrows on the suspension contact points. We'll turn our attention to the motor now. So you grab these parts out of the kit, assemble them and clean up any flash that you need to uh, smooth out. And I assembled the motor prior to painting it so all the parts were fully assembled. And then the motor as a unit was painted cat yellow. Um, and now we assemble the block, add the parts as follows. The water uh, distributor, the heads, all four oil breathers, the transmission end and the motor front. And the water pump, the alternator front and back. And assemble the turbo and add that. And then the turbo mount and the air compressor installed now. Now paint the belts flat black with cat yellow pulleys and uh, the fan black uh, that's installed last. Now locate the motor mounts on both the motor and the frame and scrape those clean and install that by gluing the motor into place into the frame. Locate these parts and paint the drive shafts steel and add those and then the longer one goes to the center mount uh, with the center mount on it goes to the motor. You can see here the drive shaft in place and also paint the uh, exhaust uh, aluminum and install it. You can see that uh, at the bottom of the photo. Assemble the um, uh, radiator halves and paint the radiator aluminum with black top and bottom panels. The radiator cover is flat black with an aluminum cap. Now install the radiator into place. Now we're already start using some of the chrome pieces so uh, we'll move uh, to the steps next and the excess steps back and sides are then assembled and they're painted body color. Then add the steps after that. Now get these parts out for the fuel and air tanks and uh, we'll assemble those next and and note that there's just no way to cure the parting line issue on the fuel tanks without uh, assembling those, completely stripping the chrome and, and using some putty to repair them and then refinishing the tanks in chrome or paint. A uh, longitudinal line is just going to be there unless you address it in a different way. So assemble and paint the air tanks aluminum and add the fuel caps and add the two decals number uh, 2 and 8 to each tank. Then install the air tanks to the back of the fuel tanks. Now attach the tanks uh, to the frame and uh, grab the steps uh, that were assembled in the previous uh, uh, step and uh, assemble those to the frame as well. Pull out the parts for the bumper including the lenses and the plates there and stickers and ins we'll install the bumper into the frame and add uh, decal 17 and then you Cut out decal 22, the tag, and use some white glue to attach it to the bumper just uh, uh, without actually using the water slide. Just glue it right on there. And then attach the running lights uh, into place with the white glue as well. Now we can assemble the front tires. And as this model does not have a separate steer and drive tires, they're, they're all, all 10 of them are the same. So there's a front and back side to the tire uh, with the details towards the front side. Now paint the rim backs and hubs uh, chrome and then insert the back and add the rim uh, front into the tires. Then add the hubs into the rim. To give the tires a road look, then press and roll the tread on some fine sandpaper. Uh, about a 220 grit will do to rough up that tread area. Now we're going to uh, take the wheel assemblies and glue the inner part of the hub onto the axle spindle. Uh, for a, a and I'll watch the alignment there as you put those into place and they dry. Get out the parts for the rear uh, wheel assemblies now. And the rear wheel assemblies are, are dualies. Now assemble the inner hub with the rear rim and 
attach the center ring and then paint these units chrome and the tire treads are sanded just like the fronts uh, on some 220 sandpaper just press and roll the tread and then insert a tire onto the rear rim face out uh, and insert a front rim into another tire face out and attach it to the center ring then do all four sets in the same manner with the uh, rear wheel assemblies uh, all put together uh, we can now attach a set of tires uh, to each of the axles using uh, some glue to put them into place and once again watch your alignment as they dry get these parts out of your kit and paint the front fenders chrome the mud flaps are white with a black mount and the rear light bar is frame color and the light tail lights are then stop light red transparent with a white inner area use decal 16 on the mud flaps and install the fenders and flaps now install the tail lights and add the tail light bar to the rear frame it seems like a lot of work so far but here it is now you have a rolling chassis on which to base the rest of your models build we can get started on the interior the color is your choice I used a, a three-tone tan uh, and the walls and the floor are a nutmeg color the seats are a light tan and the interior panels are a medium tan the shifters flat black and silver and the floor mat pedals and column boot are flat black now we'll work with the interior pan install the pedals and the shifter and then add the seats into the pan and you're starting to get a complete look it's simple but so was the truck now we'll work on the dash and it is detailed with complementary colors so I used light tan and wood colors and all the dials and the instruments are then uh, detailed with some different colors to highlight the switches and knobs although I didn't do it uh, on this kit uh, it's much more preferable idea for the instruments to go online and and download some instrument faces and just size those decals to fit and and put them into place uh, but still you can make a pretty credible looking dashboard uh, with just some fine paint uh, brushes and some uh, silver pens now the steering column gets painted black with a, a silver inserts uh, as is the wheel and the armrests are nutmeg assemble the wheel and the column and install that with the dash into the interior and add the armrests we'll work on the cab and sleeper body now and because it's important to put all the pieces together um, we're going to assemble most of this so that we can avoid any color variations on the different panels by painting them separately so um, we're going to skip the instruction sheet to assemble paint and decal the complete body the cab and the sleeper can be assembled prior to painting uh, to help the color continuity and we want to do that to keep uh, variations down as much as possible so then uh, those are primed of course before so add the firewall and the visor to the cab and assemble the walls to the floor of the sleeper using these parts we'll uh, put the air tanks together uh, air filter tanks so there's two of those and they're assembled and the mounts are added to the cab and then again uh, joining the halves will create some seams so you may have to do some filling there if you want a nice smooth finish now we can put together the cab the sleeper and the air filter mounts all at the same time now we can use these parts to assemble the sleeper roof uh, but it'll be painted with the cab detached because of the windows so add the lower roof panel and the vent doors to the roof the hood uh, has inner shields installed and then it gets painted with the cab detached as well now mask off the exterior and paint the uh, cab and the sleeper sleeper roof interiors uh, nutmeg uh, to match your body uh, interior and then there will be no interior for the sleeper because it didn't come with any parts for that uh, I'll attach the roof in a permanent position after installing the glass and the uh, exterior is then painted steel blue which is a color that I just color mixed um, with some automotive paints and came up with something that I thought looked pretty good so the air filters are then also painted same color now we can add the decals to the cab and I suggest you use plenty of warm water 
uh, to soak the decals for about 30 seconds and let them float loose and also to place them on the body uh, use some uh, paintbrush to, to lightly dampen that area so that you can move them into position then use a soft cloth or a tissue to wipe out any air bubbles and excess water off of them and use some of that decal setting solution to make sure that they conform to the body and stick to the uh, uh, stick to it very well I use some uh, self-adhesive foil to make the uh, trim on the model look uh, more realistic. It's just like tape. You stick it on, burnish it down, and then you cut off the excess with a sharp hobby knife uh, and leave it into place and it really looks nice. Now we're going to work with the glass and uh, prior to installing that I dipped my glass into some of the uh, Pledge Floor Care uh, floor polish. It's a liquid. and um, let that wick off and dry. It really makes the uh, lens look more clear and crisp. Now you can install the windshield into place in the cab uh, by using a bead of white glue. It dries clear so uh, it's a good choice uh, without fogging up the glass. The, uh, the sleeper roof comes with tinted glass and I wanted a darker tint uh, so I thought it would have more of a reflective look so using some real auto tint I cut the shape and replaced the glass uh, the kit in the glass with uh, a tint uh, and I glued it into place with some uh, white glue. Now go ahead and uh, install the sleeper roof into place. Now we can go ahead install the interior just slide it into the cab straight down until it's flush with the windows then mount the cab onto the chassis. As you can see in the uh, with the red arrows here, there are some pins to line things up, and I used some super glue to attach this uh, to make sure that it had good strong bonds. Now later on, you'll probably find a little fit issue between the front cowl of the cab and the hood, so you can cut the location pins back a little bit and leave the alignment tabs as they are. And although it's a minor issue sliding the cab forward in this way a little bit will fix the problem so you may also have to adjust the hood brace length. So gather up these parts and install the windshield wipers at this time uh, and get the other parts staged and ready for assembly. Attach the air cleaner top and install the air filters to the cab. Now paint the uh, ducting flat black and add the ducting. Now note that the ducting was a little off on my build and I'm not sure if I made an error there uh, but when I went to check it, it it just didn't line up right so keep an eye on that alignment when you install those pieces into place paint the support bars flat black and install each to the firewall and then to the radiator assemble and paint the exhaust aluminum color and then uh, install the exhaust to the crossover and then to the cab. Get these parts out and paint the roof light lenses a transparent yellow and install them into the light nacelles. Install the lights onto the cab roof then you can go ahead and add the horns, install the door handles, assemble the stacks and install those and then there's a grab bar for the driver's side stack only. Now we can grab these parts and go ahead and paint the step rungs uh, an aluminum color. Now install one of the steps on the driver's side and the two step unit on the passenger side of the sleeper. Attach the handle a handle to the doors of each side and then add the rear grab bars and install the badge to the sleeper. Get these parts out of the kit now and using some super glue assemble each mirror and install them onto the cab. Remember to scrape off any chrome at the point where the contacts made with glue so that it will bond to the other plastic. Paint the hood hinges steel and the grill gets a 50-50 wash of flat black and thinner. Then paint the KW logo for the hood a red color and insert the headlight lenses into the bezels and add the headlights to the hood. Now paint the round blinker lenses transparent yellow, assemble the blinkers and install those on the hood 
and add the badges. I'll paint the front marker lenses transparent yellow and add those to the bezel and install them. There are two uh, spotlights that can also be assembled and added to the edge of the roof and then add the hinges to the grill and install the grill adding the hood ornament in place. Add the hinge mounts to the frame and add the hood. Everything lines up on the frame and body but again there's a slight gap like earlier mentioned uh, for the air filters. All the mounts are correct but it seems that the whole cab just sits back a hair too far. And this is where we mentioned uh, a simple fix would be detaching the cab and moving it forward just a little bit. As you can see this is quite the kit. Lots of pieces and lots of detail. But she comes together like this and looks great. And here's a shot of the completed front end and here is the completed rear end of the kit. It's a pretty impressive looking semi tractor and it's going to look great when completely finished on your shelf. Now the manufacturer has provided a nice finishing touch. Um, there was chain and some cord that wasn't mentioned in the instructions and these are all the parts that were left over. But I'm sure that with a little bit of research you'll be able to find where all those cables and some chain might be used to enhance the look of the truck. Well there you have it. What an impressive looking beast this is. It takes up a lot of real estate on your shelf and sits just under two feet long. It's pretty big. But building it is not that difficult really if you take your time and work slowly. Um, parts assembly need a little extra time to cure and super glue is helpful for some of the spindly chrome parts. Starting with the chassis the build is straightforward assembles nicely. The frame was straight had no issues with any parts fit. The motor was detailed but somewhat uh, simple as most of them are molded in. So the parts count was lower and it fits in the frame nice and solid and lines up well. The interior is overly simplistic and there's no sleeper interior beyond the seats and the dash the interior is almost bare. The dash details are good but you'd expect some decals for a level uh, of this type of uh, kit. And anyway you could also print some out if you can find some on the internet on some we're using a color printer. The body assembly was good the fit and finish was nice and there weren't a uh, very few parting lines and mold lines that were problematic. They, uh, they sanded off smoothly. The cab and the sleeper were straight and they fit together well. Uh, the only one issue was the hood fit which we have mentioned a couple times here and if you move that cab forward I think that would cure that is uh, issue. Uh, and there's a few things here and there that make it a little harder. Uh, it's not a weekend build and I think it's right to be uh, rated as a level 3 for the advanced builder. Uh, it'll take some extra work and time but once it's finished wow what a impressive kit for your display shelf. Overall it's a great kit and we're happy that it was re-released. If you could find one they're still available at online auctions and sometimes at your local hobby shop so get one and put one on your shelf. Well there you have it. We hope you like this step by step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and as always at our web website on www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.